Hey everybody, how's it going? In this video, we're going to take a look at section two for the Build Widgets Robotics Challenge. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Let me kind of give you an overview of what we're going to be talking about. Um, section two in the game manual is dealing with the playing field and the game elements. Um, before we get started, I want to make sure that you understand this is not a replacement for the game manual. Um, the game manual as it stands right now is version one, and that's um, what we're looking at right now in this recording. Um, it's possible that in a few weeks from now or a few months from now, we will release uh, version two or even possibly version three as uh, clarifications come out. So you need to make sure, um, even though you're watching this now, please check on the TCEA Robotics website to make sure that you have the most up-to-date version of the game manual. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the game manual. And like I said, we're gonna be in section two and discuss um, what's going on there. So um, if, you've, if you've done this, the TCEA contest in years past, this is gonna be a lot different. Um, if you're new to TCEA Robotics Contest, this will all be new. So um, either way you go, um, let, let's just jump in together and take a look and see what the rules are talking about. So um, as far as the playing field goes, um, we're in section 2.1. Um, the playing field is played um, in, on the race against time mat that TCEA sells. That's the same mat that we've been using for years. Um, and usually at competition, there are two mats that are 48 inches by 48 inches square that are set inside of a table that is 48 by 96. So those mats are played side by side and in the middle of that is the center dividing wall. And that's exactly how we're gonna play the game this year, um, but it's gonna be just a little bit different. And what I want you to understand this year is um, there are going to be four teams playing on this field at the same time. So that means on the left side of the, the, the table, on one race against time mat, there will be two teams playing as an alliance. And on the other side, there will be two teams playing on that side on their own mat, okay? So um, let's take a look at diagram A here um, on section 2.1. Um, you'll see that there's uh, two teams here playing on the left-hand side, and then two teams here playing on the right-hand side. Each team is stationed on a safe zone, and I've marked those in green here. And you can see that there are two small safe zones Zones and two larger safe zones. Um, we'll talk about those um, in a minute um, about how they differ, but basically each team is going to be able to choose their safe zone where they start the match and where they play the match. Um, and so that's how the field is laid out. Um, and the safe zones are obviously the really big um, part of this. Uh, that's why we're talking about it first, because that's the only area um, of the playing field where you're able to touch the robot um, and then touch game elements as you come into contact with them. So um, 2.1.1 says, says the safe zones are the only area of the playing field where students are allowed to touch robots or game elements. Um, so when the robot is touching the safe zone or when the game elements are inside the safe zone, you're able to um, pick them up, um, move them around, relocate them, reprogram the robot if you want to, and then reposition it so you can start it again. Um, the key words here in the rules is touching and inside, okay? So the robot has to be touching the safe zone. And touching means there's an area inside, kind of like that black rectangle that defines the safe zone. That white rectangle is the safe zone. So the robot has to be touching that white mat inside of the perimeter of the safe zone to be considered touching the safe zone, okay? Um, now, it's a little bit different for game elements because the game elements have to be inside a safe zone. It doesn't say touching. So if you think about the black perimeter line that defines the safe zone, think of that as like an invisible fence that goes up from the floor up in space, and there are four planes that it's, they're invisible planes that are created. And when a game element crosses into that plane or breaks that plane, it is considered inside the safe zone, even if it's not touching the white mat in the safe zone. Does that make sense? So it's either touching, the robot has to be touching the mat inside the safe zone, or if a game element can be located inside which is not necessarily touching. It can be touching, but it's not necessarily touching. Um, so what does that mean for you? That means your robot, if it picks up a, um, one of the game elements and moves it 
over and, and the robot happens to be parked inside the safe zone, the robot might be touching the mat or the safe zone, but the, 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 the game element might not necessarily be touching directly, but it's inside because it's inside and has broken the planes of the four uh, sides of the safety zone. So that's what that means. Um, Let's take a look here at the different areas of the, the, the game field. Um, we've been talking about the safe zone. There's four of those. And I mentioned the center dividing wall. Um, that is actually a one by four piece of um, wood that goes across, it divides up. I believe it's about four inches tall um, from, the, from the mat. And so that's a dividing wall that's meant to keep two teams on one side and two teams on the other side. And those teams can't cross over into um, the other alliances area. And then inside of each, um, each side of the game is the rounded rectangles. And then um, there's a right angle, there's a big circle, there's a small arrow, there's the targets. And um, those things are listed in the game manual for to look at. And each one holds a different um, significance as you play the game. Okay. So let's talk about that um, in relation to the game elements. So there are a total of 22 game elements. And um, there are some of those elements that are immediately available to you, meaning they're on your mat, on your side of the mat, that your robot can just go get immediately. And there's other game elements that are potentially available to you. And so those potential um, elements um, are really potentially available to either side, either alliance, the left side or the right side, um, based on how quickly they can get to them. Because once they're gone, they're gone. So that's the potential. Um, availability. So let's talk about the game elements themselves. So there's a fake dollar bill. Um, those are branded with TCEA graphics on them. And all of these game elements will be complete, completely included in a packet that you can buy from TCEA. Um, it's possible that you could just kind of make your own or buy your own, uh, but just keep in mind that they need to be exactly the same parts that TCEA provides. And we'll give you some more information about that later, but let's talk about um, the game elements themselves. So the fake money is a, a fake dollar bill um, that's gonna be located inside the big circle. Um, now, because the fake dollar bill is small, like a dollar bill, the big circle is pretty big. And so there's going to be a large degree of randomness on where the referees place that dollar bill um, at the beginning of the match. So it can be anywhere inside the black line or the black perimeter of that big circle. Um, there's going to be one Kiva plank, which is a, a, a wooden plank um, that you're going to be able to use as one of your um, element pieces. And it's going to be located on the short arrow. Um, there are going to be um, eight Lego bricks. Those are the two by four, uh, just standard Lego bricks. Um, and there's going to be, um, there's going to be eight of them, but it's going to look like four groups of two. So we're going, the, uh, the referees will, will put two of those bricks together, um, and do that four times. And so you're going to have four, um, groups of eight Lego bricks, and those are going to be located, um, uh, well, I'll show you in, the, in a minute on the map where they're going to be located. Um, there's going to be four dice available, um, and there's going to be uh, some red checkers. There's going to be eight red checkers located on the center line. And um, let me show you where those are going to be. So let's take a look at the map here. This is diagram C in your game manual. And let's zoom in a little bit. So let's just start with the checkers. The checkers are the pieces that are potentially available to you. That means um, that if you're on the left-hand side or the right-hand side of the center dividing wall, um, those are up for grabs. And so those are gonna be balanced right along the center wall. There's eight of those. And because that center wall is pretty long, um, the referees are just gonna station those somewhere randomly along the wall. Um, in this graphic, it looks like they're pretty evenly spaced out, but some are closer than others. Um, that's going to be random for the, um, for the referees to choose. Um, it's possible that when you go to play a match that all of those are bunched up to one side or the other, or they're evenly distributed. That's, that degree of randomness is just going to be decided um, right before you show up to that match um, just by um, what the referees decide to do. So that's where those um, checkers are going to be. The Kiva plank um, is not necessarily going to be randomly placed because there is a small arrow um, near, the, um, near the center dividing wall. 
And so that Kiva plank is going to be centered vertically and horizontally. So you can count on the fact that that's going to be where that's located. Okay. We've already mentioned that the fake dollar bill is going to be randomly located inside the big circle. Again, those um, random locations will be, um, will be decided on right before you walk up to the table um, based on wherever ever the referees decide to put it. Um, the last elements that are going to be randomly located are these Lego bricks. And you can see in the graphic that um, I've got blue and yellow bricks here, and those are pushed together. They're, they're connected. Um, but there's going to be some degree of randomness because um, there's extra space inside that right angle arrow. Um, and so again, those can be all bunched up to the pointy side of the arrow or bunched up to the back side or kind of spread out. Again, you're going to have to be prepared to play the game um, regardless of where those random elements are located. And then um, last but not least, um, on these rounded rectangles, there are going to be four dice. And um, those are not going to be randomly located because they're going to be centered both vertically and horizontally inside of these rounded rectangles. And it's actually the four rounded rectangles nearest this large safety zone, okay? So this is how, th that's the game elements and that's how they're going to be located um, at the beginning of the match. Now let's start talking about um, how you're going to interact with those, okay? Um, so there's, <laughs> there's gonna be a couple of different um, things you have to keep in mind as you, as you think about how you're going to interact with those, okay? So if they're in the playing field, if those elements are located in the playing field, then you're, the only way to interact with those um, is with the robot, okay? So the robot's gonna have to go out, interact with them somehow, and then um, basically the idea is to get them and bring them back to the safety zone, or they can be relocated by the robot. So let me be clear, um, the game elements are considered in the playing field if they are not inside the uh, black line of the safe zone. So keep in mind, if they're inside the safe zone, they're inside the safe zone. If they're not inside the safe zone, then they are in the playing field. That's an either or. So either they're breaking the plane of the safe zone and they're okay, they're safe, or if they're not, they're in the playing field. So those are the two things you have to keep in mind. So as it says right here in 2.4.1, if they're in the playing field, the robot is the only thing that can, can touch or interact with them. Now, in 2.4.2, it says that the game elements, if they're in the safe zone, then, they, then you can touch them. You can pick them up, you can um, reconfigure them, you can stack them on top of each other, you can hold them for a little while, but basically they have to be returned to the safe zone, the same safe zone that they were gotten from, um, so that you can continue play with them later, okay? So um, it says you may pick them up, you can hold them, you can touch them, you can re reconfigure them as long as they are eventually returned to the safe zone. Um, and really the only person that's gonna be able to do that kind of work is the safety zone technician. That's somebody on your team that's designated ahead of time that's gonna be able to pick up and, um, and work with those game elements, all right? So um, 2.4.3 um, basically says if you, um, if you interact with the game elements in any way outside of these rules, then the referee is going to take those and they're going to be removed from play uh, for the remainder of the match. So um, that just kind of tells you that you got to play by the rules or you're not going to have access to those game elements to earn points later on in the match. So um, that's it for section two. Um, so the things to keep in mind as dealing especially with the safe zones is um, the robot for you to interact with it has to be touching and that means touching the white mat inside the black perimeter of the safe zone. The game elements just need to be inside the safe zone for you to interact with them. Um, uh, the humans can interact with them. Um, and that means that they're breaking the plane of one of the four, um, the four lines of the perimeter of the safe zone. And then um, we talked about all the game elements. The, um, we'll talk about scoring. Um, with those um, in the next video. Um, so remember, as we're kind of concluding on this video, um, this video is not meant to replace the reading and the understanding of the game manual. The game manual rules um, and the game manual may change. So make sure that you check um, the, the revision date. Um, I can show you right down here 
on the bottom left hand corner of every page is uh, this happens to be version one right here and the last edited date please check the TCEA website make sure you're using the updated version um, of the game manual with the correct um, version number and the correct date and then um, if there's anything confusing in this video, we're always gonna go back and look at the game manual. So on the day of your competition, um, whenever you go actually to play this game with other teams, um, those referees aren't gonna have the video pulled up, uh, or then they're not gonna have this video pulled up to look at. Um, when in doubt, they're going to open up the game manual and go off of those rules. So um, this is meant, hopefully, to help you understand a little bit more about what the rules are all about but again, it's your responsibility to make sure that you understand those rules as they're written in the game manual. So thanks for watching. And um, if you have any questions about any of this um, or any need any clarification anyway, on the TCEA website for robotics, there is a discussion board where your sponsor can ask questions and um, the administrators will answer those and help clarify. We know with the, this being the first year of the new format of robotics competition, that there's gonna be lots of questions and lots of um, answers needed. So um, use that space as the official way to ask questions and get answers. Um, and if you have a question, chances are someone else on another team has a question. So you might be able to help others um, if you'll jump out there and ask your own questions. So thanks for watching and good luck. I can't wait for contest day to see uh, what you guys come up with. Thank you.